The next day, private messages with Stella. How was dance class? It was alright, alright? Don't tell me you're worried about your date with Siblik. Of course not. Right and pigs fly. Who are you texting? My mother asks as she drives me home. Stella, we're talking about something from school. I say, not trying to give much detail. Oh, that's nice that you're making new friends. How was yesterday? Did anything interesting happen? She asks being curious about my personal life. It was good, but some of my friends want to hang out today. Is that all right? I asked, trying not to sound like it wasn't a big deal, but I knew she wanted to know who it was. Are you caught up with your homework? Yes, mom, and I studied for any possible tests or quizzes I might get this week. Please, can I go? All right, but don't stay out too late. I have to do some errands with your sister so we'll be home after we're done. She informed me and my phone began to vibrate. Got it. I'll try my best to be home before curfew. You're the best mom. I say before going back to my phone. I don't understand why you're worried. Why I'm worried, duh. You clearly have him wrapped around your finger. No, that's not it. What are his motives? You can't be second guessing every move the guy makes. It's not healthy. Can you blame me? No, then I have every right to second guess everything he does. Well, yes. But that isn't something to look forward to if you want any type of relationship with him. Are you willing to give him a second chance? Yeah. Why? Then you should enjoy your time with him and not overthink every detail of his actions. Fine. S no I'm right. I got to stop by the mailbox. Tell your sister to get ready because we might be late if she doesn't hurry up. My mother says as I get out of the car and place my phone in my back pocket. I grab my dance bag and close the door as I give an approving hum. I quickly headed to our apartment and opened the door. I place my bag near the entrance and walk past my sister's room. Mom wants you to get ready. She's running an errand but wants you ready for practice. I say, being brief, as I pass her room and enter mine. Thanks, aren't you coming along? She says, confused. No. I'm going out with my friends. I say not giving her much detail to think on. Are they your friends? She questions my judgment on making friends. Of course they're my friends. I promise you I can take care of myself, Nova. I argued from across the hallway, since her room was located at the other end of where my room was. Now you listen to me. I don't care who you hang out with. It can be an influencer for all I care if they don't treat you right. I will not hesitate to give them a piece of my mind. She says, before marching in my room wearing her soccer uniform. We're just going to have fun. I have known them for what two, three months. Nothing bad is going to happen to me and everyone in that group looks out for one another. I finally have friends Nova. You don't have to worry about me. I say, and she rolls her eyes before looking at her phone. Don't hesitate to send me a text. She says, before walking away. I won't. Have fun at practice. I say and hear the door shut afterwards. I quickly took out my phone and texted Siblik to see where we are going so I could pick an outfit and shower before he got here. Private messages with second chance. You got the green light as long as you promise to bring me back before 9. Where are we going? It's a surprise. I need to know where we're going so I can dress appropriately. Wear something comfortable. That's my hint? You look good no matter what see you soon. I plopped myself on the bed after reading his message and called Stella. This was a fashion emergency after all, and I needed some advice. You ran? Stella says at the other end of the line. Siblik won't tell me where we're going and I have no clue what to wear. I say, a little annoyed. Chill, you came to the right fashion friend for this one. Okay, any hints he gave you? To wear something comfortable and that I look good no matter what. I say, reiterating the text he sent me. Isn't that disgustingly cute? Focus. Yeah, yeah. Um, what did you want to wear? A cute skirt, tank top, and an oversized shirt. Haha. -ha. Very funny. I would applaud if you actually wore that to a party, but this isn't the case. It's your first date with Siblik. It has to be special. Is that what we're calling it? A date? We'll focus on the specifics later. Right now you and Siblik are going to be alone for a couple of hours and supervised. The least you could do is wear something cute and practical. Jeans and a t-shirt? Okay, let's stay away from ordinary school clothing. Do you have black leggings and jean shorts? She asked, and I went through my drawer and began searching. You mean short shorts? 
But in jeans? Yep. Yeah, I have a pair. And you never wore that to school. Girl, we're going to have a talk once I go through your closet. You can't be wearing the same jeans and different style t-shirts to school. Fashion lecture later. What do you want to combine with this monstrosity? Do you have black sneakers or boots? I have the black shoes with white at the front. Perfect. And do you have a crop top, preferably black? I do. But it's a spaghetti strap one. Even better, if he cares about you he'll give you his jacket so other people don't get distracted by your outfit. Just because this breaks so many dress code rules doesn't mean people in the real world will be distracted by my shoulders. Oh, I agree. I'm just saying if you get cold or eyed by other guys. Whatever. Thanks for the help girl. I gotta get ready but I'll keep you updated. Sounds good. The squad and I are going to have game night so feel free to call us if you need anything. Doubt it. But I will give you and her the 411. Can't wait. See ya girly. Bye. I said and hung up the phone as I began to get changed. I put on what Stella and I had decided on and began to do my hair. How ironic is it that I've never worn this style considering I wanted a new identity at school. I guess it's hard to break old habits. Once I was done with everything the house phone rang. I picked it up and pressed the number when I found out Siblik was here. I grabbed my purse which was a black backpack and headed out. Since I already knew what kind of car Siblik drives, it was easy to find him. I opened the door when he parked near me and I got inside. Hey! I say cheerful, trying not to make our interactions any more awkward than they have been. Hey! Haley! He says confused, as he places his car from neutral to parked. Uh, yes? I say, confused as to why we're not going to wherever he wants to take me out. You sure you wanna go dressed like that? He says concerned, and I raise an eyebrow at him. Excuse me, is it not appropriate for you? I say, shocked that he would be dress coding me. Not a no-no, that's not what I meant. You look beautiful, it's just... Not the right outfit for where we're going? Where are we going? I might be able to dress accordingly if you just tell me. I say, feeling bad that I might be overdressed, but he locked the car door before I could open it again. You look gorgeous. I'm sure you took a lot of time to get ready and I appreciate the outfit you chose for this occasion. He said, and I felt myself blush. I scanned his outfit which made him look good in his own way. He was wearing a dark blue hoodie, but you could notice the black shirt underneath, and some black sweatpants. It's nothing fancy but it made him look aesthetically pleasing to me. You look good too. I say, and he broke eye contact while smiling. Thanks, so how was your morning? He asks before getting ready to leave. He began to drive to our hangout location. On the way there I asked a couple of times where we were going and if he would give me hints, but the results were the same. Either he avoided the topic with a different conversation, or he would stay quiet for long periods of time. I ended up looking at the scenery while he thought of something to say. But to be honest, I was still new to Maryland, and he was taking different routes that I didn't know of. We eventually made it to the mall. It wasn't the same mall that was on the news, but it was bigger. The mall? I say, confused, and he giggled as we got out of the car. Too generic for you. He teased as he walked towards me. No, it's just that I thought you were going to do something different. Oh, like what? He asked, with a smirk on his face as we began to walk to the entrance. I was next to the parked cars and him as we walked, but there was some visible distance between us. I'm not telling you. I pouted as we kept walking, and he giggled. I'll find out one way or another. Don't worry about that. Sure. And I'm sure this was Tanner's idea. Actually. Our friends rarely come here so I doubt they'd recommend this as a date. Careful, Siblik. You don't want me to get the wrong idea. I say, as he opens the door, and I walk through. And what idea would that be? You sure have a lot of questions for someone who wasn't answering mine throughout the car ride. And ruined the surprise for you, no chance. Come on. Your surprise is this way. He says as he walks in front of me. We looked like two people at a mall whom one was just following the other. Nothing special. So why would he call this a date? What does a date mean to him? We can date and not be each other's partners, right? Is that how it works? It's only official when he asks me to be his girlfriend or I ask him to be mine. 